So you want to gather a, a good amount of leaves to do your printing with. You can experiment. Um, you want to find ones that have got a good lot of texture as they give you the best detail in your prints. And in my garden, I find the best ones are amaranthus and foxglove. And I've had good results from fig leaves and quince leaves um, and ferns, which are probably my favourite thing to print in any method because they, you just get such lovely results with them. And you can also use native trees. So if you're out on a dog walk or foraging and you get lovely results with oak, um, maple and sycamore and rowan leaves because you get a lot of indentations with those. But just practice and experiment with anything you can find. Hello, I'm in my studio again today and I wasn't going to film until I'd done a big tidy up, but I think in I'm going to keep it real and I'll, I'll give you a little, I'll show you the kind of mess. It's not a huge room, I have a lot of stuff and when I'm creating a lot of things come out because I think, oh, I need those papers in that drawer, I need to get that whole drawer out. So everything gets a bit chaotic. Um, so I'm going to show you a printing method um, which is very simple but you can get really sort of pretty sophisticated effects. You do need a jelly plate and if I lift up this pile over here, um, there you go. It's um, You can actually make them, they started off by people using jelly that you make you know, into sweets and moulds and things. And then some clever people realised that they could manufacture them. The thing about the ones that you make yourself, they have quite a short shelf life and after a while they go mouldy. But these are made with mineral oil and you have to look after them. You can't sort of use sharp things on them, but I've had these for ages. Actually, this one's quite new, but I've got another one that I've had for ages in different size and they're absolutely fine. And what's so good about them is that they have a soft sort of yielding surface so it will pick up really fine details. And leaves are just fantastic. I've tried with flowers, but not many of them were that successful. But the thing, because leaves, you've got these lovely ridges and furrows on them. They pick up the detail really well. I think you'll see, this is one, most of these I've used two or more colors, but this one has just got um, one color. And you can see how it picks up all the ribs in the leaves. So it's a wonderful way of um, showing the plants you've got in your garden, just having a bit of fun. So I'll show you how I do it. Apply your paint on the plate as sparingly as possible as the thinner it is, the more it picks up the detail. Then put your leaf down, piece of paper on and press really firmly. And I use a bit of masking tape so I can reposition the piece of paper. Take your leaf off and then wait for it to dry or speed it up with a hairdryer. When it's dry, you can use one or two or more colour paints as your next layer. And while it's still wet, put your piece of paper down and then you want to press firmly, perhaps even use a roller. will dry, put it somewhere to dry, although they do dry very quickly as it's such thin layers. So that was a fern and now I'm going to use a fig leaf as you get a nice sort of big abstract shape with that. So I'm mixing colours on the plate here. You might get one or two blobs but that just makes it look more handmade I think. So the same process Pressing down really firmly so all the details go into the paint. Once it's dry, I'm using a pale colour to have a really good contrast. And you really want to, I've speeded it up here, but you really want to wait to make sure the paint is dry because it's the top layer drying onto the bottom layer that will then ensure that it adheres and you get both layers when you peel off the paper. Now I'm going to try with a foxglove leaf. So I'm using a pale layer first this time. I'm 
I'm using a nice smooth paper because that will pick up the detail well. And as contrast, I'm using a dark colour. I think this is Payne's Grey, which is one of my favourite colours to use. When I pulled this off, I realised that the paint hadn't been completely dry and it hasn't printed as well as I'd like. But instead of abandoning it, I just did a bit of detail on top. And I often do this with some of my prints that don't turn out so well. So second time lucky, I'm going to do exactly the same and try and get a better print and wait longer for it to dry in between. So I'm using the same colours again. And you can leave it for a few minutes to dry and put pressure on, perhaps put some books or something like that, just to make sure you've really got that contact. Yes, that's a better one, much more detail in that one. I'm going to go for a different colour scheme using a bright orange, which is a little bit thin, so it can be quite a subtle look and using a fern. Again, waiting for it to dry and then it isn't such a high contrast with this, so it's going to be a different sort of effect. This one doesn't show up as well on camera, but I think you'll see in the photograph that it actually has got, got quite a lot of beautiful, subtle detail in it. And now I'm gonna use another fern, this time using a dark turquoise, another favorite color. You want to really push down so that the details of the leaf go into the paint. And you can, if you've got some blobs at this stage, you can remove them before you get onto this next stage. I was pleased with this one. I think this is my favorite one from the whole print run. I'm doing another foxglove here using dark brown paint and exactly the same process, but using the orange as the secondary color. This is quite a striking combination and makes for a really bold print. And then <laughs> deciding what to do, I thought I'd make this my last with this size plate and I thought I'd use one of these huge fig leaves. There isn't much actual paint that comes off the paper, but it makes a difference that you've taken off just that little bit. Using my Payne's Grey again. So this is a more subtle effect than the last one, but um, you do get some nice detail with it. I then decided to get my bigger plate out and realised I still had some prints on it from the last time I'd used it. That's a bit of corrugated card. So I decided just to use part of the plate to do the leaf print with. So rather than doing this in two stages, I put a, a thin layer of um, paint down, placed the leaf and then used a piece of scrap paper on top to get rid of the excess around the leaf because I didn't want that to go on the print. So exactly the same method, wait for it to dry and then put another layer on. I'm putting turquoise and a paler colour. So 
You can build up lots of layers like this. You can do several in one. And in fact, after I'd made this print, I actually did some other sorts of print. And if you look at my blog, you can see the finished result. This is why I don't clean my plate between using it because you do, as well as the deliberate shapes that are there, I do actually quite like picking up the sort of grungy bits as well. And I like this, so I decided to use some other prints that already had some backgrounds on, just to add some interest. And you can use stencils and all sorts of things. I, used, I applied the paint a bit thickly here, so this print didn't turn out very well, but my phone was just about to run out of battery, so I was rushing a bit. But it's a good, I thought I'd leave it in as it's a good example of a not such successful print. But again, I might use it and do some other work on top of it. So it did, it picked up most of it, although it left a little bit of residue, but you can see it just looks, it just looks a little bit crude. So it's not my favourite, that one. And then this is the last one in the session, just before my phone completely died. And I put another black layer, but, but it was a thinner layer this time. If you do put too much paint on, you can use your roll to actually take some of it off, which I would have done if I'd had more time for that first one. So again, I'm using a bit of scrap paper because I don't want to get the surrounding paint onto a background I've already made. And I peeled it up and thought it wasn't completely adhering to the paper, so it gave a bit more pressure. And you can see how with less of the black paint, you see much more detail. So I hope you enjoyed that. Even if you're not going to have a go yourself, you enjoyed learning about it. But honestly, it's, it's really easy, even if you don't think you can't draw or paint, you don't need to read this. You don't even have to use lots of colour. I quite like just using monochrome. Um, see that, you know, that one is just one colour on white and it's still really effective. And um, let me know if you'd like to know how to make this. Um, I could do a short and just, it's very, very simple. See, it's just an accordion. And it's quite a nice thing to display because I often think that we make these things and then they just get left in a pile. So that was the thinking behind making it like this. So I hope you enjoyed that and you'll join me again um, in my studio or in the garden. So in the um, cause of keeping it real and not just tidying it up for social media, this is a slightly chaotic studio. So I've got two tables. This one is actually a sewing table. It has a, a removable, as a part of it you can lower down so you can have a flat bed with your sewing machine. Um, and then I've got good light coming through here, although it is a south facing window, so it can get a bit hot and a bit too bright and sunny. And this is the remains of making my book, so it involved cutting lots of strips. And just to show you that all the strips I cut off to make the um, papers uh, neat and tidy, I then used I then used as decoration as one of the end papers.